Hello! Remember in my January sales art haul I showed you some things from a store called Creative Dreams Paper Crafts? Well, I got an email from them not that long ago saying that their lease is finishing and they're closing down. No! So they had an everything must go sale and I thought I'd get down there while they had the most stuff. And I ended up buying an entire bag full of stuff. I can't even remember what's in here. I just kind of went on a bit of a shopping frenzy throughout the whole store. And let's see what crazy things I bought. Stuff that I never knew I needed until I went back in there. And then I found out once I'd bought everything that they might be moving to a different store and reopening, but in this climate, who would know? So I figured I may as well go shopping while the shopping's good. I wasn't the only one. The store was chock full of people, all wearing our masks, all trying to socially distance, but all trying to bag a bargain at the same time. So let's get into this bag. I mean, seriously, it's so full of stuff. I'll pull out this box first. All right, so a little art bin for storing paper but I'm sure I can find other things. It's actually quite a deep one. It's a small one too and quite handy because I totally need more journals. An express it dotted journal. I actually saw this one in January the last time I was there. It's the only one on the shelf and so I just figured well I'm taking it home <laughs> because I like dotted journals. For sketching and bullet journaling it's only got 100 GSM paper so it's not very thick. There we go. There's the grey dots. It's quite smooth. You know, just the standard bullet journals, and I like the cover. It's that nice fabric-y material, so yeah, I just grabbed that. Total impulse buy, but I just really liked the look of the tin. I cannot resist a tin. This was one of the more expensive items, and this is a Tim Holtz set of little scissors, and I'll pull it out. I do like the packaging that Tim Holtz stuff comes in. It's usually by Ranger. I'm not too sure if this is by Ranger. But these are haberdashery scissors and I always find these little scissors are so handy to have. Super cute tin. Oh, <laughs> those have got much wider handles than I was expecting. Those are nice. They fit my fingers really well. I think these might have been the last ones on there too. There were a few things that there was one thing left and so I just ended up buying it. I got this mainly for the tin but also because I like scissors. Next thing, keepsake envelopes. I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do with these but they are in different sizes and they are that translucent vellum look to them. Oh, they're so cute. I don't even know what I'm going to put in these but I just thought they were too cute to resist and now I've pulled them all out of the bag and that has sealed shut so I'm just going to move all of these to one side to deal with later. <laughs> I got another couple of packs of those watercolour postcards, they're hot press, they're cotton, 300 GSM. I like the little cardboard case that it comes in and then it has a bunch of these really nice watercolour postcards. It is definitely hot press paper, that's a very smooth texture. They'd probably be quite good for ink as well, so I can never get the stupid things to go back in. Is it that it, or does it go the other way? The other way. Got it! <laughs> it comes with 12 cards. I couldn't remember exactly how many there were. So that's those. Let me put my scissors back to one side, but I will keep them in reach because there may be other things I cut out of the packets. Just this one thing of tissue paper embellishments. The design caught my eye and... I might use it for something, no idea what, but I just thought, like the envelopes, they would be nice for my collection. I got this Malini watercolour journal, same brand as the postcards, but I've used one of these journals before, it is definitely not cotton paper, it's just a cellulose, it's 200 GSM, but it's actually quite a nice book. Hang on, let me just peel that out. And the paper's quite decent. I mean, obviously it's not quite as robust as 300 GSM paper. Yeah, it says 100% wood pulp. But for a little sketchbook, these are actually quite nice. That card is not coming off. But anyway, it's a standard sketchbook with cold press watercolor paper in. Just a couple of paper blocks. Oops, that's already peeling, so I might as well take that off. I like to collect papers. Every so often I'll use them in projects and I just like looking at them to be honest. I would like to do a little bit more mixed media work. I haven't done very much at all for a while but it's just a fairly standard designs. I quite like that one. You know things that you can use for all sorts of paper projects and collages and 
whatnot, so I quite like that too. I thought these ones were quite nice. And I also got this one, which was a little more expensive, industrial paper collection. They had a few other designs, but this one caught my eye. You know these are never going back in the packet, <laughs> but I'm just going to pull them out. They're nice. Yeah, this paper does feel a bit glossier than this paper. These would make good backgrounds for something. <laughs> I really like cogs and things like that, so... Yeah, just some interesting papers there, all quite dark, and I think they will be useful for something. Plasticky metallic charms and various shapes. A camel, a shells, bellows or something, fish. It was labelled a pokey tool. So much like my other one, just one of those little metal pokers. Yeah, then look, it says pokey tool on there. I think I paid a dollar for it, something like that. So good for mixing half pans of paint and things like that. I always find uses for these. And it had a pink handle, so yes, that was coming home with me. I might keep that on there for now. Speaking of pink things, I also got a craft knife with a pink handle, so an exacto knife type of thing, and it's got some spare blades. I do have one somewhere around, but I think it's got a bit rusty, so I just thought I'd get this one as well. I also got one Posca pen, a black one, I did not pay for 99 it was half of that or something, and it is in a 0.7 mil, so I figure I tend to use these quite a lot. I also got a black brush pen. I do already have one, but it's completely out of ink, and I just thought I'd get another one. I don't even know where the other one actually is. And they also had a refill cartridge, so this is by Zeke. I really like this ink, it's so nice to draw with. And I also found another kneaded eraser that was on super sale, so I added that to my collection because I can never have too many of these. Big old bottle of Gamsol Odorless Mineral Spirits. I am forever using this stuff. My other bottle is about halfway down, so I thought I might as well get another one while it was on sale. And that's something that will sit on my shelf and get used eventually. Also really good for thinning oil paints and cleaning your brushes for oil paints. So it's a very useful spirit to have and it doesn't stink like turpentine does. I cannot handle turpentine at all. It just makes me feel so sick. I got these. I have absolutely no idea what I'm going to do with these. They are enamel accents. Now I'm looking at it. It's dimensional faux enamel. So it's, I think just a, a thick acrylic paint but if you want to add it to things to give it a glossy opaque dimensional glaze. Ranger have some good stuff they really do and they have a lot of interesting products that I've never seen before so yeah <laughs> I'll put those to one side. I also grabbed another three liquid pearls in colors that I'm pretty sure I don't have. I've got a whole box of these when you stick them on they give a dimensional look and I've used them in any number of videos just to add things. They're nice and metallic, they're really pretty, I love that ruby red. There's also a slate and taffy, so just a few more to add to my collection. I figure I've never seen these anywhere else except in Creative Dreams paper crafts, so I thought I might as well try and get as many colours as I could. I'm pretty sure I've got the majority of the other colours. Cosmic Shimmer Pixie Powder Firework Burst. They had a whole bunch of these and I've really never used them before. I don't even really know what they are. It says it's a dry mica pearl powder and dye mix for creating shimmering colorful effects on any porous surface. Shake bottle before use, wet your paper or card then gently puff on some powder mix. Add some more water using a brush or spray bottle and watch as the colors appear. So I think it's like that brusho stuff that you shake it on and then it dilutes into the water but I thought I'd go the firework burst because that seems like it's got a mix of colors in it and I'm going to test that out soon but the last things that I ended up buying are these these are dilutions ink sprays and I've looked at these off and on for years and just wondered if I could justify getting them and I just thought you know what I'm going to get them since they're closing down so I bought a few different colors I've got post box red bubblegum pink Crushed Grape, Vibrant Turquoise, London Blue, Fresh Lime, and Lemon Zest. 
I've never used these before, but they're basically you spray them onto things. It's an acid-free, non-toxic, concentrated colorant for porous surfaces. I think it's like a dye, so it's probably not going to be very light fast, but it would be fun for putting in mixed media journals or anything really. So I'm going to open all of these and I'm going to test some of these products out because I'm really curious to see what the colors are like. And I'm also curious to see what this pixie powder is. I'm going to use this book that I got from Typo in my Christmas art supply haul, I think it was in there. It's watercolour paper, only 190 GSM, so it's nothing special. <laughs> I even tested out those Typo watercolours that I got, and they actually turned out not to be too bad after all. So I might do another video showing those again, but I've just done a couple of random sketches. This was with Daniel Smith's Moon Glow, and then I used a few other Daniel Smith paints here, and the iridescent blue in the background. Just little doodles while I was watching the telly, but the paper's reasonable. It's only got texture on one side and the other side's really smooth, so I'll probably just do one side of paper. But the paper's quite nice and I thought I might test out these sprays in it, so I need to peel all of the plastic off these bottles and I will be right back once I've done all of that. All right, that took forever. It's that stubborn plastic that does not want to come off, but I finally managed to peel them all. So I'm just going to spray some water onto this paper and see what this pixie powder does. I am so curious. I might spray it up the top here. Oh, that's quite a lot of water there. <laughs> oh, well, I'll just spray it on and see what happens. See. Oh, wow, that's kind of cool. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so we can see this a bit more closely. This stuff's weird. That's amazing. It's like exactly like a firework. I like that. Ah, okay. I might've got a bit over enthusiastic there. That is so cool. It's sort of got mica powder in it. I'm not too sure if that's going to dissolve. It does by the looks of it. It's most odd. I might have to see if I can get some more of those. They're neat. All right, I'll leave that there and I'll just spray some ink on and we'll have a look at these dilutions. So we'll get the red first. Got to have red. So let's just... Oh, wow. That is like blood red. That's pretty cool. Let me just spray some... Oh, goodness me. That is so bright. That looks like a blood splatter, doesn't it? Ah, uh, and it's all over my desk. Joy. Wow, those are so vibrant. How pretty is that? I see why people like these. I'm so glad I bought some. That goes a long way too. <laughs> I've made such a mess of this paper already. Just as well I used my cheaper book in this case. So that sprays a long way. Let's do some of the other colors. I'll try and mix them into each other. How cool is that? <laughs> oh my gosh, this stuff goes everywhere. I think you need to have a splash guard in order to use these. I love how the tiny little dots all merge in together. That's really cool. I think I chose a really good group of colors here all of the rainbow colors and I'm just going to spray water over it now and just make a big old mess out of it I think I've made a joyous mess here, but there's so much color. Wow, they're gorgeous. I'm so glad I picked up some of those dilution sprays. You can also buy the stamps and things, but I'm not so much into stamps. I just thought the ink sprays would be really cool. I may have gone back again to see if there were any other treasures to be had. And also because I really liked that fireworks pixie powder and I thought I might see if they had any more. They had three left in the whole shop, so I grabbed them. There's a second fireworks, and this one I think I'm actually going to give away. That's coming up in the not too distant future. And I also managed to find an emerald green and a straw yellow. So I will shake those out in a moment. I also grabbed four sparkling alcohol inks. 
just because why wouldn't you have sparkly ones? So I got fuchsia, onyx, incandescent and cappuccino. And then I also grabbed a few more Dilusions inks because I loved the other ones so much and I figured since they're at such a good price, why not get a few more? That's pomegranate seed, tangerine dream, slate gray, balmy night and cut grass. And we also found this rechargeable LED folding desk lamp. Nick was with me at the time and he thought that this would be a really great thing to travel with. Not that we're traveling anytime soon, but when we do, folds flat like that. And then you basically, let me see if I can get it to work. There we go. Concertina it out and it turns into a light. I'll just turn my studio lights off so we can see it. And it also has three settings, so you can put it on too low. So we can see it's got a little LED bank under there. Medium and high. And it's not the brightest light in the world, but it's enough to see by, you know, if you want to read and there's no desk lamp. So we picked that up. Those are always handy to have and there's a little USB cable in there. Okay, so this one's dried and I saw a little spider in there with the fireworks thing, so I just scribbled that in another page and just try out all of the other colours. And that is falling apart already, so yeah. This book is pretty cheap, I'm not too worried about using up the paper. I might just give it a bit of a light misting over the whole thing. And then let's just try out a couple of these powders. Also, I watched a couple of videos, you don't puff it, you just shake it on. So if I just... I might need to add some more water actually, but these ones are really shimmery. <laughs> How cool are they when they activate? Puff a bit of the emerald green on. That one is absolutely gorgeous and I really want to find more of these. There are other craft shops that I've seen them online so I will be looking to find some more colours because they are so gorgeous and I can see me using those. Let's quickly try these dilution sprays. This is the Cut Grass. This one, Balmy Night, I think it's black, but I don't actually know. I may have thought I'd picked up a black one and I ended up with this, but so uh, your guess is as good as mine as to what color it is. Oh no, wow, oh that's really pretty. That's like a really deep, almost Payne's Grey. I like that one a lot. I think this is going to be my experimentation book after all of the mess I've made on the last two pages. It is fun spraying colours though, I have to admit. Now, alcohol ink doesn't really go on the top of water, but I'm just going to drip a bit on anyway. Um, I don't know what this is going to do. Oh my gosh, wow! Let's do another drop. That's absolutely beautiful. Okay, cappuccino. And, well. Can you see how the alcohol is pushing the water away? It's kind of fun working with alcohol and water together. This is a fuchsia. Maybe I'll drop some down there. Those are neat. Yeah, that's gorgeous. So you could drop that over the top of things to get a shimmer. How pretty. I'm definitely going to make a video using some of these things on different surfaces to see what kind of abstract arts I can get. I just remembered I bought another one in Angelic. I just want to see if it looks the same as the iridescent one. This one I got in my initial haul in January. Okay, that one's a milkier colour. Well, I think I like the iridescent one even better, but cool. At least it's good to know that they are slightly different from each other. <laughs> oh my gosh. I ended up getting rather a lot of stuff here by the looks of things. I always feel guilty going to closing down sales like I'm a vulture picking through the carcass of a closing down shop, but sometimes you've just got to do it, don't you? I mean, when the opportunity's there and these products are so much cheaper than they normally are, it's always worth picking them up. I hope you enjoyed this video. I was not expecting to do this at all. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. And I will see you all again in my next video, which will be really soon. I hope you're all staying safe and well out there and having a wonderful day. Swatch you later. Bye.